In this video, I'll present a numerical example that highlights the capabilities of the combined nonlinear kinematic and isotropic hardening plasticity model. The example presented here is inspired by two papers that we published a few years ago in which the apparent anisotropy in high strength steel pipelines uh, are modeled using this material model. I have added the two links for these papers here for those who are interested in learning more about some applications for this model. The true stress strain of a material is given in the shown table. For simplicity, the problem assumes that sigma y alpha, which is the size of the yield surface, is constant. The problem, however, or the question does not provide that value. Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio are given here. First, it's required to find C and gamma such that the armstrong frederick evolution law for the back stress can be used to describe the material's behavior. Then, the different components of the stress and the strain are required to be calculated if loading is done in three steps. In the first step, a shearing stress of 300 MPa is applied. In the second step, the shear stress is removed. The, th the third step is associated with an increase of sigma on 1 from 0 to 500 MPa. To find the material parameters, we first find the plastic strain or the equivalent plastic strain by subtracting the elastic strain from the given total strain. Careful investigation of the new curve shows that the initial yield occurs when sigma on 1 is around 360 MPa. The curve provide provided implies that the initial yield is given as 360 MP and then increases. The problem also states that the material is assumed to follow a model with a constant size of the yield surface, i.e. constant sigma y alpha. And so we can subtract 360 from the given curve to obtain the curve of alpha versus the equivalent plastic strain. Using a nonlinear curve fitting algorithm, here uh, we used Mathematica, and you can find the code uh, on, in your online notes, the value of C and gamma can be obtained. They are given as C equal to this value, and gamma is equal to this value. The next step is to find the strains associated with the given loading steps. Under shear loading, the von Mises stress equation is given as the square root of 3 sigma 1 2 squared is equal to the initial yield. This equation results in finding the value of sigma 1 2 that would separate the elastic behavior from the plastic behavior. The material will behave elastically until the shear stress reaches the value of 207.85 MPa. Beyond this value, sigma 1, 2 and sigma 2, 1 will increase incrementally up to the given value of 300 MPa. The consistency condition can be used to find the associated increment in the equivalent plastic strain. Except for sigma 1, 2 and sigma 2, 1, all the other delta stresses are equal to zero. The radius of sigma von Mises uh, circle is also equal to zero. So sigma y alpha is constant. So the slope of say, the sigma y alpha with respect to the equivalent plastic strain is also equal to zero. And so we are now missing this term partial f by partial sigma uh, alpha ig multiplied by delta alpha ig. We know the, the increments in the stresses, but we don't know the increments in alphas. And so we're going to use the armstrong frederick equation that relates delta, delta alpha ij's with the equivalent plastic strain and uh, replace delta alpha ij with these equations. When we do this, we end up with this uh, very large equation that relates the increments in the stresses with the increment in the equivalent plastic strain. This equation can be solved numerically 
by uh, per inputting the values of delta sigma 2, delta sigma 2, 1, and the, all the other values, and uh, calculate the associated increments in delta, the equivalent plastic strain, and finally summing the values at the end. We are using an Excel table uh, where delta sigma 2 is input here, sigma 2 is input here, the values of alpha 1 and 2 and alpha 2 1 are equal to here, the derivatives of the stress with respect to sigma 1 2 or the, 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 the derivative of the yield function with respect to sigma 2 or with respect to alpha 1 2 which are equal to negative uh, of each other are given here. Given all these values, we can calculate the equivalent value of the equivalent plastic strain. And S12 can increase, or sigma12 can increase all the way to 300, and the equivalent increments are calculated. Uh, at the end of step one, the total equivalent plastic strain is the sum of these components. Alpha12 and alpha21 are equal to the sum of these components. And the elastic strains, of course, are given from using the elastic strain, uh, the, the, the elastic constitutive law. The plastic strain components can be calculated using the associated flow rule. And the values are shown in the table here. The, equi the equivalent plastic strain delta, uh, the, sorry, the, the plastic strain component one, two, and to one, they are equal to each other. And using the associated flow rule, uh, they, they have a, a big equation function of the equ equivalent plastic strain. And so using these increments, we can calculate the increments uh, in the plastic strain. In the second step, upon unloading, the von Mises stress evaluated at sigma one two equals zero and alpha 1, 2 equal 92.15 is given by a value less than 360. Therefore, unloading occurs here elastically. The values of the plastic strain component, the back stress, and the equivalent plastic strain do not change at all during this increment or during this uh, loading step. In the third step, sigma on one increases incrementally to 500 MPA. This step, however, has two loading regimes, an elastic regime and a plastic regime. The point that separates the two can be found by evaluating the von Mises stress at the values of sigma minus alpha. The components of the shear stresses are given as zero, so sigma one two are equal to zero. But the shear uh, components of uh, the back stress are not equal to zero, but are equal to 92.15. The value of sigma on one at which yielding occurs is then calculated to be equal to 322.7 MPA. This value is less than the initial yield stress given by 360 MPA, and this is due to the Boschinger effect. The loading in, in shear has caused the apparent yield stress in the uniaxial direction to decrease. The next step, sigma on one, will increase incrementally from 322 to 500 MPA. Here's the equation for uh, the consistency condition, partial f by partial sigma on one multiplied by delta sigma on one. This is the only stress that is changing. And we also have partial f by partial alpha j multiplied by um, the, the corresponding component multiplied by delta by the increment in the equivalent plastic strain. Only the components whose alphas are not equal to zero are uh, going to be used here. And so we will have the components of alpha 1, 2 and alpha 2, 1 and alpha 1, 1. From these and given delta sigma on one, we can find the, the component or the increment in the equivalent plastic strain. So here are the components that are associated with the increase in the stress. The increments in the plastic strain components can also be calculated from the equivalent plastic strain using the associated flow rule. 
these plastic string components are equal to the equivalent plastic string multiplied by partial f by partial sigma on 2 <coughs> and the equivalent plastic string uh, in the direction on 1 is equal to the, sorry the, the plastic string in the direction on 1 is equal to the equivalent increment in the equivalent plastic string multiplied by partial f by partial sigma on 1 and similarly the equivalent plastic the the the, the plastic string component 2 2 is equal to uh, the the equivalent plastic stream multiplied by partial f by partial sigma 2 2 uh, using these uh, equations and using numerical integration we are able to calculate the increments in all these values at the end of the third step the values of the back stress components the elastic and plastic string components are shown here Note that the yield surface moves in the stress space in the direction of loading as evident by the increase of alpha on 1 and a decrease of alpha on 2 and alpha to 1 at the end of step 1. These values were around 92 while loading in step 3 has made these alphas decrease and alpha on 1 increase. Uh, I suggest that you should try to solve this uh, example yourselves and compare your results to the answers given in this example online.